Good morning. Street camped here last night. Furnace went down though, a couple days ago. I'm not sure what happened to the furnace. It's got plenty of propane and the power seems to be hooked up properly, but some sort of switch went off or some sort of short. I didn't go down there and mess around with it, so none of the wires have been moved around. Fuses are all good. I'll figure it out eventually, but whew, it's cold. <laughs> went down to negative five last night Celsius and uh, that's not so fun. The reason I stayed downtown in the van last night is because I have an Airbnb today, first thing. So I'm gonna do that. And then, uh, very exciting news, don't tell Shelby, I might buy a motorcycle today. So stay tuned for that. I gotta go check it out. So I had to come over and uh, catch up with Champ. He's been with my sister this whole time. Sam's learning how to skateboard on my skateboard. Sorry. I won't go near the cars. Good job, Sam. I thank you. Thank you. It's gross. Sam. Sam. Yes. You gonna ride that thing or what? Let's do this. So about this bike, I'm gonna go check it out right now. It's the first one I've gone to go look at. It's in my price range. The guy only wants 800 bucks for it. And uh, it runs, which is a huge bonus. It's under the weight limit that I've set for the van because I'm gonna put it on the back of the van on this right here, which I just bought. It's one of the many mods I've been doing recently. And uh, lastly, it's a 400cc, so it does have a fair bit of kick. Enough to carry me and Shelby, so let's go check it out. Hopefully it's everything it promises. So this is it. It's a 1984 Yamaha XS Seca. There's the Seca branding right there. 400 cc in all of its uh, 1984 glory but uh, we put it on here on the first time and wouldn't you know it my first motorcycle just bought it just got it just got my license just got the rack yesterday I dropped it right here fell right off the back of the rack while we were getting straps we thought it was locked in tight it was not so Got a broken lever here. First on my list of repairs. <laughs> oh boy. Well, you're gonna drop it eventually, I guess. Might as well do it the first day you buy it. All right, after test driving it for uh, five kilometers, all my straps are still tight. Position looks good. It's pretty much the same as I left it. Eventually I'm going to put support straps on that side and that side to the hitch underneath so that it keeps it level. And I'm going to lower the spare tire down because it's causing a lot of this issue. It's too high and the handlebar is getting caught on it. So if we can lower that, we should be good. It is properly nerve-wracking to drive this thing right now. 
my smog pump is going off one of the valves. It's the same issue we had in Texas, but I think it's finally actually broken. Um, so I'm gonna have to fix that soon. But uh, it's so nerve-wracking. It doesn't drive differently at all. Like I don't, I don't notice the extra weight. I mean, I think there's like a slight placebo effect here, telling me that like it's not breaking as quickly or something. But uh, man. I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous about that thing. I've stopped like twice now, three times. Twice that I haven't filmed, once that I have. Checking to make sure it's still there. <laughs> Wiggling it around. You can just barely see it in the back. Yep. All right, I made it back safe and sound. And look what's still here. Motorbike's still here. <sighs> Whoa, that was nerve wracking. I don't know why. Like, I knew it was solid. Sometimes I just psych myself out, you know? Look at these two guys. They're ready to go into Gatineau. We're gonna explore a cave. Get in, loser. We're going spelunking. Spelunking! So this is probably an ongoing theme actually in our channel, but uh, wouldn't you know it, didn't do enough research, road is still closed for a week. So we can't go to the, the caves we wanted to go to, uh, and somehow that's entirely Mark's fault. So he's buying us oh, ice cream now. That's my fault. Okay, Thanks, cool. Mark. Thanks for the ice cream, Mark. <laughs> no problem, guys. Wicked. So this is Wakefield. This is a little town. Um, I would say it's kind of like a very Anglophone town in the middle of Quebec, so there's a little bit of contention here. Steam train used to roll through here, so they're famous for that. And it's along the, uh, Getsno River, or right near the Getsno Park, so it's absolutely freaking gorgeous here. Check us out. Sixty blocks away from here Down the street Where you will rest in peace, rest in peace This beautiful place was strange as me It was a rainy day When I broke out When I broke out of this synchronous
Hey guys, I'm wearing I'm wearing a white shirt. This means danger. <laughs> Let's see how this pans out. Mark is the sloppiest eater I know. He's also the slowest eater, which is not a good combination for ice cream. <laughs> Mark's garden of seclusion here. I think it's important to note that Mark actually grew up here in Wakefield. Despite that fact, he is the biggest tetkare I've ever met. Doesn't speak a word of English. And his yeah, head is literally square. Look at that big stupid looking one. Jeez. Roadside America is pretty cool, and it's definitely like a huge phenomenon. But there's something to be said for Roadside Quebec. Roadside Quebec has got some real, real charm. You're making fun of him, and you look at yourself. It's in your hair, your head hair. No, it's not. I'm fine. No, I'm fine. I look great. It's a good look. I won't deny. Well, technically, my head hair is in my mouth right now. So. Yeah, that's it. Come on, film. Yeah, you eat it. Yeah, yeah, put that in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, you like that. <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs>